What is up YouTube? That's it here and today I'm super excited to announce the start of a brand new series on this channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the top five steel types exclusive to the VGC 2022 series 13 format. That's the one with all the restricted and mythicals that goes live on September 1st. Hopefully over the course of the next month or so while we're waiting for the ladder to go up, I can do my absolute best to bring you guys all the knowledge on all the Pokemon that I think are going to be really, really good in this format. So by the time the ladder starts, people will know what they should be using and what they shouldn't be using. What I'm going to ask though is for you to leave a comment below and let me know the type you want to see me work on in the next video. The type that gets the most votes, that's what we're going to work on. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys left a like, left a comment, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this. Um, I do think that steel types are going to be really, really good in this format. Um, they get big max steel spikes, which is like arguably one of the best max moves in the game. A lot of these guys also learn Earthquake as well, so they can go for Max Quake. So the ability to be really, really strong max mons and really, really bulky mons is what steel types bring to the table. They're also going to be really, really good against just a lot of good stuff. Some popular Pokemon in the format are going to be things like Yveltal. Most steel types have a good match versus Yveltal. Popular Pokemon are going to be things like Calyrex ice steel types are really really good there stacking those max steel spikes and some steel types you know like Magirna, jirachi and stuff like that can get access to trick room you know solgaleo dialga also get trick room so what i'm going to be doing here is going over the pokemon that i think they're going to be the top five most common the top five best and the top five pokemon that you should be building your team around or slotting into your team if you need a pokemon of the steel type so to start things off let's see let's start things off really really strong a pokemon that i've used a lot in the past formats that i think is going to be really really good here and that's going to be dialga i think dialga is a pretty good pokemon to slot in at fifth now dialga does bring a lot of stuff to the table it's arguably one of the better trick room setters but i think dialga's biggest strength is the fact that it's a special attacker and an amazing Dynamax Pokemon. You see Dialga's common set that I like to run on it is Pressure, which is going to be really, really good in this format as well, considering most mons are using moves that have relatively low PP, like, you know, Water Spouts, Astral Barrages, Glacial Lance, and stuff like that. Pressure is going to be very, very good. A Life Orb set will allow the Dialga to Oko almost anything, going for big 150 base power Max Worm wins, uh, big Max Quakes to take out Zacian, big Max Steel Spikes, and anything else, while also, uh, you know, Trick Room turns into Max Guard if you're in Dynamax mode, or you can use it just to set Trick Room yourself. So really, really good mod that can do a lot of stuff in, um, you know, Series 12 and other restricted formats. Dialga has been amazing, and it's it's kind of crazy to see Dialga barely squeak into fifth year, but that just shows how many good Pokemon we're actually getting in this format. There's tons of good restricted mythicals and stuff like that, and I think Dialga is definitely going to be top five, and it's that perfect Pokemon you might want to slot into your team if you want just like a little bit of speed control. You want a different max option than maybe your main max option. Like a good example is like Dialga Yveltal. That's going to be a really, really cool core because you can go air streams with the Eveltals or trick rooms with the Dialgas. It makes your opponent have to play a little bit of a 50-50 game. Think about things that Dialgas weak against, things like uh, ground attacks, um, things like fighting attacks. Eveltal is a good matchup against those Pokemon. Eveltal can use max airstream or oblivion wings to deal with the fighting types, and it can obviously switch in on the ground attacks thing, so it's flying typing. So really, really good coverage there. Also, like Eveltal weak against things like electric attacks, uh, fairy attacks, Ice attacks, those are all things that Dialga has a great matchup against. So because things like Yveltal is going to be really popular, I think Dialga is going to be a great teammate for that. So going into the next one, going into the next one, I think this is going to be a sleeper OP pick. Also, I would really, really implore everyone to leave a comment and let me know your top five. Because I'd actually want to see what everyone else's top five is too. You know, there might be some Pokemon that we're totally sleeping on. And if you have a Pokemon you think I'm not mentioning, let me know in the comments. So uh, let's see, number four. I have the list written down here. That's why I keep looking down. I think it's going to be Zenta. And a lot of people are like, that's a, you can't use Zenta. It says it's a fighting type, obviously. It says it's fighting, um, but it's a steel type. Um, when you add the uh, rusted shield to it, it gains steel typing. And this Zenta set isn't the most competitive. This is the one that I used uh, previously. Remember, the Iron Head will turn into Behemoth Bash, which heals double damage for Dynamax Mollinger, which means it's really, really good. But the set that, the reason this guy's good is it gets Wide Guard. It's probably the best wide guard user in the format because it's a wide guard user that can actually still have an amazing matchup versus max mons also we will be seeing a decent amount of porygon 2 in this format i think and so having big stabbed close combat potential on your zenta can be very very good it also gets coaching and so you can pair it next to so many other mons and the fact that it's a fast coaching user you can use that to enable your teammates these pokemon um the Pokemon that you're going to see do well in these formats are ones that like highlight how good their teammates are and make their teammates play really, really well. Dag is a little bit of an enigma there because Dialga wants to max and have everyone else support it, but like, 
you know, Zenta is good because it enables teammates. Zenta is a really, really good partner for things like, uh, let's see. So let's think of some good partners that Zenta would be really, really good for in this format. Because uh, I think that we're going to see a lot less Intimidate, which another that's another buff for Zenta. Just because, like, if your opponent wants to run in Sin, obviously, even Intimidate Zenta can trade really, really well with an Incineroar. But, like, because we're going to see less Intimidates... Um, it means we might see more physical mons, which means you might see you might start seeing like physical versions of other like special attackers. Like physical ogre might be usable. You can even make a really fast Zenta and then a Zacian that's like maybe not that fast and give a uh, coaching boost to your Zacian. Another good one's gonna be Cali Ice. You can definitely coaching boost on your Cali Ice while also having the wide guard for support to make sure you don't just get melted by an Astral Barrage. So I think Zenta's gonna be um, surprisingly good in this format. It gets things like Snarl, it gets things like Screens, it gets so many unique moves, it gets things like Howl. I think Zenta is going to be really, really fun to use in this format, and if there was ever a format to make this Pokemon work, it's definitely here. And it's a big, bulky, bruiser, support restricted that I really, really like. So let's go to the third one. This is the first Pokemon that we're going to be featuring from the new Mythical list, and that is going to be Top 3 Baby Big Mel Metal. Big Mel Metal, right? So Mel Metal is, uh, yeah, Mel Metal's able to be used in this format. I think you can transfer them over from Pokemon Go. I think you also get one for transferring a Pokemon into your Pokemon home. So if you're curious how to get Mel Metal for yourself, those are a couple ways to do it. But yeah, Mel Metal is pretty cool. It also gets an, its own exclusive G Max move, um, which sets Torment on the opposing field. So, like, um, what that does is it means that your opponent cannot use the same move two turns in a row. So if they're choice itemed, they're gonna. I think they start to struggle, but they're basically forced to, like, if you use Protects correctly, they're forced to, like, weave in those moves, and you can basically just, like, wall them forever with Melmetal. So that's really cool. If you're not using G-Max Melmetal, though, you can go for a Max Steel Spike, which gives you a defense boost to you and your teammate, which is going to be really, really good. I think Melmetal is going to be great in Trick Room teams, and it gets a bunch of really, really good moves. I really like the Double Iron Bash here. So we have Double Iron Bash, we have Iron Fist as our main ability, powers with the punching moves. Double Iron Bash, 60 base power that hits twice. So this is going to be great for breaking sashes on things like Whimsicott's, uh, messing up Grim Snarls. You can do really good damage to Kelly Shadow with this as well. Um, I think Melmetal is going to be a great max option. I personally like running it with like Life Orb, but um, I think Vested Melmetals will also be very, very good. I think it's a really cool Pokemon though. It underspeeds a lot of stuff. Uh, I think the event Melmetal that you get is actually set to have no good speed already. So if you get the event Melmetal, you're already good to go. This is a great Pokemon that can slide into most teams. Another thing you can do with Melmetal is obviously you can still pair it with that Zen thing, go for coaching boosts onto it, but you can actually just slot Melmetal into like a really, really aggressive fast team just to like have a Trick Room matchup. Because if they get Trick Room up on you, you're like, cool, I underspeed you and I have, I have no good speed. Um, I'm going to underspeed everything and just start one-shotting all your move, your mons with max moves. So Melmo, really, really cool option, and it's going to slot into a bunch of teams this meta, in my opinion. Also, remember, like I talked about, Intimidate's not going to be as popular. Yes, you might see an Incineroar, but you're not going to see, like, Intimidate cycling between, like, Incineroars and Landos. So it's not like we have to respect multiple Intimidates on our mons in these formats. So I think that's another reason why Melmo's going to do a lot better than, uh, you know, people may actually give it credit for. So then there were two. Then there were two. We still have a few mythicals left to use, right? We still have full mythicals. We have like uh, Genesect, we have Jirachi, we have Magirna. We also have really good mods like Sol Galeo and, uh, um, you know, Dawn, or sorry, Duskmane. Uh, we also have good things like Kartana that's good versus like things like Ogre. I do think though that the second best steel type that you guys can be using in your own teams is going to be Magirna. Um, Magirna is absolutely busted, right? This is one of the best Pokemon like ever made for any situation. Um, it gets a really, really unique ability in Soul Heart. It says it boosts a special attack stat every time a Pokemon faints. That's your teammate. That's both your opponent's teammates. It's like a crazy beast boost. If this guy's just active on the field, when your opponent's Pokemon faints, you get a plus one special attack. This thing runs away with games. It can go for shift gear to boost its speed, or you can use like a no good speed, um, like trick room one, like kind of like this one goes here. It's built similar to the Melmetal in that like, um, I like to go for it on Trick Room teams, very, very slow, very, very bulky. And then from there, it's just able to fire off so many good moves. Like, look at the set that we have here. We have the Trick Room, obviously, so it can be a really good Trick Room setter. But then it gets, like, Ice Beam to cover Flyers, like you have or, well, you don't really need to check if Eltals, but, like, Flyers in general, um, Ice Beam's gonna be really good to hit. I, I have this for Groudon in case they, uh, are able to, uh, change the weather and stuff like that. I think it's just good damage of being able to, you know, there's a few good things about Ice Beam. Max Hailstorm's good, right? Because you're able to break Sashes. Uh, Steel Beam also um, is okay. I think I could make that probably into a Flash Cannon if I wanted to, but I plan on using this mostly in a Max mode. And then Floor Cannon, tons of damage here. Um, it, it gives you a sharply special attack drop. It's like a 
like a Draco Meteor, but for Fairy. But we don't really care if we're a Max Moon every single turn. So it's really, really cool Pokemon. I would highly recommend you guys try this Pokemon in your own games. It can be slot into so many teams. It's so bulky. It's so strong. And Magirna is just next level busted, in my opinion. I think it's a really, really cool Pokemon, and I'm happy to see it featured. And yeah, I, I, we were talking about earlier, like, Yveltal is going to be very popular. Magirna is a great check to Yveltal, and if you could check that Yveltal, it might unlock your team's ability to start relying more on your Kali Shadows and other Pokemon that kind of have a bad matchup for Yveltal. So the last Steel type that I would say is the best Steel type in the game. It might be actually the best Pokemon in the game. It's a similar to the Zenta. It's going to be Zacian. And again, it says just Fairy. That's it. That doesn't say Steel. When you attach the Rusted Sword to it, it does gain Steel typing. So Zacian, obviously, really, really good. This Iron Head turns into Behemoth Blade, which deals double damage against Dynamax Pokemon. Zacian is just like the most ridiculous Pokemon, I think. I think it's just the most ridiculous Pokemon. Um... It has an amazing speed stat, an amazing attack stat. It's Rusted Sword, similar to the Zenta, with the, uh, sorry, Intrepid Sword, very similar to Dauntless Shield. Uh, Zenta gets a plus one defense boost, which, when it comes on the board, and so that's one of the reasons why it's so broken. Zashin gets an attack boost, and again, I talked about this a few times. We're going to start seeing a lot less Intimidators. Screen still might be big, maybe each team has, like, one Incin, but we've already seen, like, Incin doesn't actually even necessarily check Zashin. Like, you could bring it in. But it's going to be a lot harder for that Sin to like pivot and make its way to this Zacian if every one of Zacian's teammates is like another restricted or better. So, and Zacian gets obviously gets like close combat and like Sacred Sword to be able to take that Pokemon out anyways. It's a, it's a Steel type that doesn't care about other Steel types. Like, let's think about this. Sacred Sword rips through most of these Pokemon. Ferrothorn, Heatran, um, what is it? What's another? Stakataka. Uh, Zacian's going to be really, really good, and the meta is going to always be built around this Pokemon, around this Pokemon speed tier. What you're going to want to do is apply just a little bit of speed control so you're a little bit faster, so maybe pair it with things like Regilecki, um, sometimes a Tailwind Center, maybe a Grim Snarl as a teammate, or even an Entity as a little bit of redirection, and just have Zacian trade one for one with every single Pokemon. Um, worst case scenario, it's a one for one trade, right? Because you're going to hit them, KO them, and then their teammate takes you out. So they have to perfectly play this to where they don't just get swept by the Zacian going, I KO this, I KO this, I KO this. Usually at worst, Zacian's a one-for-one -one trade, which is really, really good in a format where every one of your pieces is really, really important. I recently was watching a video, uh, I think Neil VGC made it, where he talked about like the value of trading and how like that's kind of how formats like this are put together to where I trade with you once, I trade with you twice, and then we have a situation where if I traded and I was proactive about it, I took pieces that stopped your pieces from checking my last two pieces and then i'm no longer trading i just have an advantage now so zashin's a pokemon that really helps you get that advantage and i do think we're going to see more subsets than um in previous years because it's going to be so popular and so viable that the key to elongating his presence on the board is going to be using substitutes so hopefully you guys like this little list um i could go Further in-depth in future lists, if you want to see more EV spread breakdowns, uh, I could go into Pokemon Showdown. Let me know if you guys want to see more like that, or if you just want general info like this. This is my list. I think Pokemon that if I were to maybe add, maybe Genesect, maybe Solgaleo, maybe Kartana. But for the most part, if you're not a legendary in this format and you're a Steel type, there's some really, really strong competition, guys. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what type you want to see me feature in the next video. You know, if we were to feature a type that didn't have so many legendaries, we'd actually see some Pokemon that aren't legendary making the list. So let me know in the comments what type you want to see me work on next. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace out, and I'll see you guys next time.